everyone! This is a video tutorial to help you understand how the size of an atom can affect the pKa. So when we're looking at the atom, we're talking about the one that has the H directly attached to it. So the atom that has the potential to lose an H and therefore develop a positive charge upon the loss. So if we take a look at this example here, the atom we're concerned with in this case is chlorine, here it's bromine, here fluorine, and here iodine. So it's important to remember that there are size changes and trends on the periodic table. Typically you see a decrease going across a row, but that decrease isn't massively significant. However, when you start going down a column, those are large increases because you're starting to add additional energy layers onto the atom that you're talking about. So here what we're going to see is that iodine is the furthest down. Right above it would be bromine, you'd have chlorine here, and fluorine. So fluorine would be the smallest and iodine would be the biggest. The trend is if you have an increase in size, you're going to have an increase in the acidity. So we would say then that the iodine is the most acidic and the hydrofluoric acid would be the least acidic. And then comparing these two, because bromine is larger, it would be next in line and then the chlorine would be ranked third. Let's take a look at why that's the case. Okay, so in order to understand how size is able to affect the acidity of a compound, let's take a look at the conjugate bases of each one of our acids. So we have Cl minus, Br minus, F minus, and I minus. I've drawn circles around them just to have an illustrative effect for how their sizes would vary. So iodine is the largest and fluorine is the smallest. So now what that negative means is, is that that compound or that atom in this case is holding on to more electrons than it would in its atomic state. So when you have more electrons all smushed into a space, you're going to have more repulsive forces. Because in fluorine everything is so compacted, there would be very strong repulsive forces occurring between the electrons in fluorine. Whereas in iodine, or the iodide ion, we're going to see that because the electrons are spread out over a much larger space, they're not going to be as high in their repulsive forces. Therefore, these electrons would be more stable than these electrons would be here. One really important thing I want you guys to understand is size will always trump electronegativity. So we do not care that fluorine is the most electronegative. In the case where you have very disparate sizes when you're moving down the column on the periodic table, size is the thing that matters. So because these are very different in size, we're not looking at electronegativity, we're not looking at anything else. We're just saying iodine is the biggest, therefore the electrons are spread out and have the least repulsive forces, so this would be much more stable than the fluorine would. So because this is more stable, this would then be more acidic. And because this is less stable, this would be the least acidic.